That's it, I guess. The essential quality of horse racing is hope. And without hope, there's nothing. But it's that consuming hope of someday coming up with that one big horse that drives men on season after season. call him Big Red. He's one horse and half a million or a million. <laughs> He's most eye-catching. He is the most perfectly conformed, balanced individual. He's a wonder horse. Oh, you can't take nothing away from Second Terrier. He's just got everything. He's just a super horse. If everybody in the United States love him and also in Canada, I certainly should love him too, don't you think? <laughs> He's, he really likes people. That's why make him a good horse, I guess. He's a horse he loved to play a lot. Like he picks up his halter and throw it around and he push you around. He's big and strong, but he's not rough. We also get a pony uh, named Bill Silver. He's very much in love with the pony. And uh, when he's uh, away from the pony, he always frets a little. He always wanted by his side. I was working with Mr. Lawrence for 18 years. And uh, every good horse he find a run up on, he always switch it to me. So. I love the job, and I love to be around horses. If uh, every horse I rub coming like secretary, I don't think I want to be a trainer. I just want to be a groom. Oh, yes, I mean it from bottom of my He's such a wonderful horse. As you've got to love a horse like that. He's so honest. He tries so hard when you run. Gives you everything else he can give you. Whatever he does is just fantastic every time. Very friendly, good nature horse, and you can do anything in the world with him. He's a very intelligent horse. He's so intelligent that I flew him one day on a DC-9 which is a little low for him. He had to keep his head down. He had enough sense to keep it down all the way till he got off of it. Well, that's how smart he is. Sometimes he can be like an arm baby. Really, he can be just like an arm baby. That he can do anything that you want to him. But sometimes he says, well, I don't, I don't want to be bothered. So he goes in, in, in the back of the stall, he step back. He don't want to be bothered. So, and once in a while again, then he come to the door, then he want to pull your coat. But he just love people, man. He just watch him, pose for them. Gallop just like you, a brand new Rolls Royce when you hit a bump, and just glide right on across, you know? Sometimes that he can get rough. So once in a while I can talk to him, oh, easy. Then he start flicking his A's, you know? Then he come back to me. But when he want to just go, he might say I cannot hold him. But sometimes I can talk to him, and he'll calm right now. I can whistle to him sometimes, right? 
sometimes I call him Big Red, sometimes I say, come on, Big Bum, you know. And it seemed like that he understand. There's an old saying in racing that you read the best to the best and you hope for the very best. Now, this doesn't always work out, but in this case, it certainly has worked out with added bonuses. He happens to be an outstanding looking individual. He's impeccably bred. And of course, his racing record speaks for itself. You know, it's not restricted to just the public. He's really captured the imagination of every horseman. It rather amused me talking to all types of horsemen. They, many of them were very excited that Secretariat was coming. And others just felt that, well, Secretariat wasn't going to put any money in their pocket or any bread on their table. And they were very blase about the whole situation. But the first day that Secretariat galloped down the turf course, I was amused to see that the racetrack training program just shut right down for about one hour and all these blasé horsemen, stable employees of every description all turned out eager to see the great secretariat. There was considerable uncertainty as well as excitement in the week of secretariat's visit to Woodbine. The great horse was here, but would he really run? It wasn't until three days before the race, when he had his first full workout, that the decision actually was made to run it. His owner, Mrs. Penny Tweedy, and his jockey, Ron Turcotte, flew from New York for that final workout. Seems that I'm a Canadian by birth, and so is Ronnie, and they come here with a real champion and finish his career in Canada, which Mrs. Tweedy because I think it's a good sport woman to let us come over here and see if we could finish the right way. The first one was classic, because I thought he had some chance to be a classic colt. And the second was something else, which is a play on his dam's name, and then the third was Secretary. Yes, it's uh, one of the greatest things that's happened at Woodburn in the history. He hasn't won every race, but a uh, uh, horse can't tell you if he isn't feeling well. <laughs> a completely unexpected fog delayed the big horse's final workout. Thousands of people, drawn by the presence of this magnificent horse, came to Woodbine, and some of them waited three hours in the foggy morning for him to work five furlongs over the grass course. I haven't seen a real pen in a long Ironically, it was a tragic morning for Ron Turcotte. At the very moment that he was riding Secretariat in the workout at Woodbine, the stewards at Aqueduct in New York were making a decision to suspend him for five days. This meant that he would not be able to ride Secretariat in the International, and he would be replaced by jockey Eddie Maple. I think Fred Kyle would make his French. Hey, look at that Okay, thank you. Okay. Mrs. Tweedy had the mayor and he wanted to read it to Bro Ruler, so they flipped the coin who got the first foe, and she lost, and the first foe was still a maiden. And you get secretariat. Had she won the flip of the coin, she'd have had the first one, and somebody else would have had the second one. There have been times during the secretariat's racing career when I thought he might not be a truly great champion. I went to all of the Triple Crown races. I came away in the Derby saying, well, it was a good race, but I'm still not certain. After the Preakness, I thought, well, he's a pretty good horse, but I'm going to wait. But I was thoroughly convinced after the Belmont. There was no question in my mind that this was the greatest horse I'd ever seen, and perhaps the greatest ever. Not only was he the only horse to win the American Triple Crown in 25 years, but it was his way of going which stirred the hearts of men. He simply annihilated his three-year-old opponents. 
I'll never forget the Belmont Stakes. That was the race he won by more than 30 lengths. It was really the most convincing triumph I've ever witnessed in all my years of watching horse racing. I was nervous to get that ahead of the stretch. I thought he could roll home from there on in because he was so far ahead. <laughs> what makes him a great horse, he does everything right. He's very quiet to handle. He doesn't uh, overexcite himself just like an old pro. He's out there and he's just doing his thing. He reminds me like of Joe Lewis when he was a fighter of Babe Ruth. You know, some have it and some don't. Personally, I think Secretary is probably one of the greatest horses of all time, even going back as far as Man of Wars, which such a great horse we've all heard about, probably never seen. Yeah, Man of War. I saw him running in one race. That was in a match race at Candleworth Racetrack in Windsor, Ontario. That's where I saw him, him and Sabat. It's remarkable that the two greatest horses of this century, in America at least, Man of War and Secretariat, both were known as Big Red, and both ran the final races of their careers on Canadian tracks. Both nice horses, but this horse, the Secretariat, broke so many track records. I think it would be a good race if they had to hook together. But now it happened he's here. I'm going to watch him tomorrow race him. The weather for the International was a cruel disappointment. It was the last Sunday in October, cold, bitterly cold and wet. But more than 35,000 people and a personal tribute to a great horse came into Woodbine that afternoon. Undoubtedly, if the weather had even been 10 degrees warmer, it would have been the largest crowd in the history of any Canadian sporting event. Where are you? Where are you? Let me hear you. Where's all the players? We came all the way from New York to watch Secretary run, and we hope he wins. I come from Guelph, and i have uh, looking forward to seeing Secretary winning this race today. Oh, I think it'll be a terrific. I wouldn't want to miss him for anything. I don't come that often. I just came today because I want to see Secretary run. I come to see Secretary race. I feel this is the last chance I might see Secretary ever race, so I thought I'd come to see him. Oh, listen, we wouldn't have missed this for anything. If it was four feet of snow, we would have come. It's a super horse. This wasn't to be any walkover. Despite Secretariat's might, 11 horses were entered against him. There were some good ones from Canada. Presidial, Fabe Count, and Twice Lucky. And among the good American imports, there were Golden Dawn, Big Spruce, and Triangular. And of course, Canada's own horse of the year, Kennedy Road. Training a horse like Kennedy Road is like driving your first Cadillac limousine. Uh, it makes you a little nervous. You're afraid you might break it. He's proven himself to be one of the greatest horses ever produced in Canada. It's a great thrill to be able to get on a horse and ride a horse like this, let alone train him. When I was a kid, uh, I used to be so happy when I could ride a really good horse. There's a feeling you get that you can't explain to anybody. In my career, I, I think this is the biggest thrill for me so far, to be able to train a horse like this. Sunday, uh, we're hooking, uh, supposedly, the horse of the century. Kennedy Road, he's in good shape. We ran him last Sunday, broke the Canadian record. Gomez, uh, he's the ideal rider for this horse uh, because of his natural uh, ability to judge time. Secretary got beat two or three times already. Hitler got beat in the Second War. I don't, know why, I don't see why he don't get beat. So my chances is very big. I rode him last time. I really got impressed with him. And to me, it's between Secretary and me. Secretary show up in Toronto. He's very, very big help for races in Canada. Even if he get beat by me. This horse, when he comes out of that gate, this uh, he's just going to burst into the league. Just go. That's what he said. That's what he knows how to. That's the way he runs best. That's the way we're going to do it. And uh, I'm hoping it's a good, hard, fast racetrack, and they'll have to beat the record to beat him. Top of the day. Good horse. Better grab his pictures, because he wins. It'll be the upset of the century. It was admittedly a day of very mixed emotions for one little man, Canadian-born jockey Ron Turcotte. It's like coming home with your own hero. You know, like, uh, he carried me to so many uh, notable races, and. Now he come home and I can't ride him. I think it's very unfortunate. I hope this jockey does just as well. Ronnie play a big part. I think Ronnie is, was very good. He come up every morning and he worked hard with me. He worked the horse mostly all the time. Uh, and he's, I think that Ronnie Turcotte today is probably the best rider in the United States. We try to work together and 
He asked me different things about the horse, different feelings when I work him, and then he adjusts the situation the way you think it should be. And we've been a great combination, I think. It's been an incredible experience and uh, satisfaction. I have an opportunity to work with a horse like that. He moves so good and so free, and when he runs, he he runs so fast. You don't really realize how fast he goes because it it's uh, he's, he's got so much power and he's got the speed and everything. Like uh, I don't think no jaw can get on him and s say the time that he went in. I know I can't come come down to the time because he, he does everything so easy. Uh, it's like piloting a jet, I guess. He just push the accelerator and he goes on. I don't think the bad condition will affect the horse at all because he's always impressed me like he would run even on broken bottles. I'm very grateful to have had Secretariat in our lives. Uh, my father spent 30 years in racing and developing his broodmare band and to have something like this come out of your own breeding is a tremendous thrill and a great sense of accomplishment. He's so good looking, he captures the imagination of not only the race fan, but the children. The children are crazy about this horse. I want to see Secretariat race. I think Secretariat's a great horse. I think he's so wonderful and so exciting, and, and he's brought families out to the racetrack, and our mail is full of love and enthusiasm, and I hope that all of this lasts and, and inures to the benefit of of racing. He has sort of started a resurgence of interest in racing. The average fan was getting older. We weren't getting people out to the racetrack. With all the youngsters that have fallen in love with this horse, if a third of them make their boyfriends take them to the racetrack when they're 18, the Secretariat will have achieved more than just his race record, more than his money won, and, and more than the number of times you've seen Mrs. Tweedy on television. I found her to be one of the most gracious and charming women I've ever met. I don't know of anyone who would, could have been more cooperative than she was in every phase uh, leading up to the race. I'm delighted that people are glad he's come and are enjoying having him here and seeing as much as we're going to be able to this afternoon. It's bad luck that the weather is not pleasanter, but racing is a matter of luck with the elements and you can't control these things, so we just have to accept the fact that it's a bad day. The people who really are enthusiastic are here, cold and wet anyway. The Secretary loves to run, and this should be communicated to the world, that this is a vital sport. It's an exciting sport. And it's not an exploitation of horses, that there are horses like Secretariat who are sound and able and think running is thrilling. He knows when he wins. He knows when people notice him. Um, it's been a good experience for him, too. There was an added bonus for racing fans. The world's most successful lady jockey, Robin Smith, came from New York to ride triangular in the big race. I decided to be a jockey because I love to ride horses. I love to ride horses fast. And I like competition. And it just seemed like that's what I was born to do. I wanted to be a jockey from the time I, can, I was two or three years old. The only hard time in this business for me is getting an opportunity to ride good mounts, which I attribute to the fact that I'm a girl. They still believe that a girl is not as strong as a male jockey, which is true. but. Uh, I don't think that that extra strength that men have over women, in the riding profession at least, uh, makes a difference. I think it's finesse and communication with your animal. It's fantastic. I'm glad to see a female jockey getting in the race. I think she has a real good chance. Not bad looking either. <laughs> I don't really have any goal in this business other than just riding five or six races a day because it's the only thing that makes me happy. I don't want her to win, I want uh, twice lucky. Number nine is Presidio, written by North America's leading rider, Sandy Holly. Presidio is a good contender. The secretary is the horse to beat, but we'll be out there to beat him. Number four is Big Scripps. Well, I think secretary is going to go all the way. He's going to win by a, a mile. He's unbelievable. I hope secretary to win. I just hope he wins today because it's his last race. Obviously, he's going to win. Number what else? He's one of the greatest horses that I've ever seen my racing time. I've been to quite a few races. If he rode like he did the last time, I don't think it'd be no contest. 
every one is a big one, especially this one. Probably the biggest of all, because that's his last one, and I certainly hate to see him get beat. I'd like to send him home a big winner. The easiest race on paper is the one I find we lose. I cannot pinpoint who I think might beat us, but I certainly worry about today's race, because it does look as if we ought to have a good shot at winning it. So I have to worry. We're just going to burst out of the gate, and the eyes are just going to be out of this horse's head this high, and he's gone. Like the wild man from Borneo, he's gone. Here on. Kennedy, though, comes away quickly on the outside to take the lead. And that is Secretariat now rushing up on the extreme outside to go into contention. As they swing into the far turn, Kennedy Road has the lead by a length and a half. Secretariat is second with Presidio coming on third. Babe Count is fourth along the inside. And now they're midway of the turn as Kennedy Road leads by about two and a half lengths with Secretariat running along second. A gap of seven or eight lengths with Presidio third. And coming into the stretch for the first time, they cross over the main track and it is Kennedy Road on top. And here comes Secretariat on In the tradition of champions, Secretariat climaxed his career with a smashing triumph. It was an unforgettable moment. That great crowd thundering acclaim as Secretariat smashed his way across the finish line in the final race of his career. What more fitting climax could there have been for the most brilliant and successful season in the long history of Canadian horse racing?